All right, welcome back to Ferrigno Freedom Channel. I'm Dante Ferrigno, and I'm glad you're here. I got my three-year blood work done, and I call it my three-year blood work because I've been doing the carnivore diet now, specifically the lion diet, for three years. And for the most part, I've stuck with that diet 100%. Occasionally, I've made some choices that I shouldn't have made because I wanted something I shouldn't have had. And I also tried a few things, like I tried to reincorporate certain foods back into my diet, everything from eggs to walnuts to bacon and pork and a number of things that are not on lion diet. And for the most part, I've kind of found out I don't do well with much of anything. That includes cheese, that includes dairy products, most vegetables because of my gut issues. Almost every time I've ever had any spices or anything like that, it's caused me to have a flare up in my gut area. And that was the reason I started doing lion diet to begin with, because I wanted to heal this gut problem. This particular round of blood work has been very eye-opening to me about one thing in particular that I had no idea about previously, but now I know that it's something I've been dealing with for a long time. And I also found out that it can be exacerbated by certain things that I do in my life, and we'll get to that in a moment. But I want to be able to go over the numbers I had looked at. I had asked my doctor to pull up a few specific things for me. And then I told him to order whatever blood work he thinks that would be good to look at for a carnivore way of eating. When it comes to blood work, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I've got anything figured out. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm doing a decent job since I've been doing this carnivore way of eating. Obviously, I want to know that my doctor is happy with what I'm doing. But then there's a side of me that has learned over the last three years that medicine is taking us down a completely different path than what we thought it was supposed to be taking us down. Most of us think of doctors as being somebody who's going to go, when we go to them, we tell them what's going on, they check our numbers, and then they tell us what we can do to stay healthy or to get back to a healthier stance in life. But it turns out most of what is being done these days is all about prescribing medicine. It has nothing to do with getting you healthy. There's no preventative care. There's no training in nutrition. There's no focus on nutrition. And it's turning out, in my opinion, and what I've been able to see in my life and all the things I've been researching over the last three years, is that what we eat has far more to do with how our body is going to look and feel than anything I ever thought. So without any further ado, let's just get into the numbers exactly as they came back. And then I'm going to compare those to some of the numbers I saw before I started Lion Diet and also immediately after starting Lion Diet to see kind of how there's been any progression in any particular area. First, let's go ahead and bring up the first chart here. This is my CBC, which includes differential and platelets. I have a doctor who is very much for the carnivore way of eating as being an option for people getting healthy. He is not against talking about it, and I'm thankful for that. So uh, I just wanted to be able to say that, and he is extremely happy with all of my numbers, even the ones that I'm a little concerned with, he's still very happy with. So that's encouraging to me because he's a medical professional who actually takes his oath seriously of providing health care for people who are trying to figure out how to stay healthy, how to be healthy, and how not to be drugged all the time, relieve some symptoms, and keep that money rolling in for the medical institutions that they are emboldened to. So when we take a look at these, we look at the white blood cell count, 5.2, well within the normal range. Red blood cell count is 4.61. Again, right in the middle of the normal range. Hemoglobin is 13.9, which is right above the lower end of the normal range. And hemocrit at 41.4, right in the middle of the normal range or slightly on the low side. When you go back and you look at my, my previous numbers, let me see if I can bring this up for you. So we look at my white blood cell count here. And back then it was a 9.0 and a 6.1. You can see the dates these were taken. This was August 5th, 2020, up on the top left up there, and then March 5th of 2021, almost exactly two months after I started eating the lion diet. So my white blood cell count was higher beforehand, which indicates that my body was probably fighting infection or something like that. 6.1 was a good bit lower. Red blood cell count at 4.61. We'll go back over to here and see the red blood cell count. It's the fifth one down at 5.16 and 5.65. Hemoglobin at 13.9. Previously, my hemoglobin is the second one down from the top at 16.7 grams per deciliter back in 2020. 
And that even went up to 19.1 after a month or so of being on lion diet. But now it's come down to a nice normal range. And then the hemocrit at 41.4. Now this might have been thrown off on my previous numbers because I was on TRT at the time. If you look all the way down at the bottom of the chart, I didn't know anything about how TRT worked back then. And that's why my TRT uh, testosterone numbers were so high at 1313. But when you come back up here to the top and you look at the hemocrit, 48.8. I'm just glad to see that it's in the normal range. MCV stands for mean corpuscular volume, 89.8. That's kind of maintained the same previously at 94 and 96 back then. So not a whole lot's changed there. MCH and MCHC, normal. Uh, RDW, normal. Platelet count. I mean, everything is normal. But when you compare them to my previous numbers, they're all pretty much in that normal range. And you decide for yourself if any of all this stuff makes any difference to you. Because honestly, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference to me. Nothing's high. Nothing's low. The doctor didn't have any complaints about anything. So I'm happy with these numbers. And I don't want to keep you bored with them all day long. Let's see. We had my comprehensive metabolic panel. Go ahead and go to the next screen on that one. So here we got my glucose numbers, and those were somewhat of a, a question mark for me at one time because I thought, wouldn't my glucose numbers be real low if I'm on a diet where I'm not eating any sugar? And sometimes that's the case, but then I learned about gluconeogenesis and how your liver will sometimes produce glucose from the protein that you're consuming, depending on how much you're getting and uh, I've learned a lot over time about how much protein I should be eating, how much fat I should be eating. These days, I eat a whole lot more fat than I used to. And we'll talk about that in just a second when I get to the cholesterol area, because I think it's I think it's kind of indicative of something I haven't been able to verify yet. But I know from talking to other carnivores and other people in this community that have posted about it, they've talked about something called the Feldman rule or something like that, where it talks about eating a lot of fat before you get your blood work panels taken can actually drop your LDL numbers. Well, we'll get there in a moment. Meanwhile, let's see, my glucose levels back then were 90 prior to starting Lion Diet, and then 68 in the low range after starting Lion Diet. So my body was starting to become fat adapted and that was a big change for my body to get used to not using glucose that I was consuming for energy and to start using the fat I was consuming for energy. All right, urea nitrogen is 21. As a matter of fact, if you go back to before I started Lion Diet, it was in the same range. My blood urea nitrogen was 19 on the high side back then. And then it actually came down to 12 after nearly two months of doing Lion Diet. Now, I didn't expect that to stay low because you're going to have more urea in your blood when you're eating a lot of meat. But as long as your kidneys are functioning to flush that stuff out of you, then it's not a problem. And my kidneys were functioning fairly well, according to my doctor, until he started to see improvement in my kidney numbers. We'll take a look here. You can see the creatinine numbers, probably one of the most important numbers for knowing your your kidney function. My creatinine was 1.1 here. Previously, it was 1.3 and again, 1.1. So it's just kind of staying nice and steady. And my kidneys seem to be improving as far as the EGFR goes. My doctor originally had pointed out to me, he said, wow, your, your EGFR has improved to 75.9. That's why I had this highlighted on this sheet is that it had gone up from 62.9. And I didn't realize that that was a big uh, indicator of how well your kidneys are performing. Well, now I know that means that basically my kidneys were performing at about 62% of their best level and they had improved up to 75.9% from switching from a standard American diet to eating the lion diet. And it's still maintaining a very good level at 80% of its capacity now. So anything over 60 is a good sign because that means you're not facing some kind of kidney failure. So I wasn't down that low yet, but being in the mid to low 60s, looking back on that, I realized I was progressing in a downward trajectory and the damage I did to my kidneys in those time period has taken some time to heal, but it's getting better and it's getting better ever since I've been eating Lion Diet. So I'm very thankful for that. Sodium, 
sodium you would think would be off the charts, right? Because I eat salt on all my food. I eat salt. I, I, I put salt in my water. I lick rocks of salt when I need a little energy. You would think with all that sodium, my sodium levels would be off the charts. You know, that's the thing they always tell us. It's going to cause your blood pressure to go crazy. But I've learned some things about that too, that it has more to do again with your kidney's ability to get rid of that sodium because you're not overloading your body with carbohydrates that causes your kidneys to retain all that sodium and cause you to get uh, swelling and edema in your legs. I don't get anything like that, even though I eat a lot of salt. Potassium level was totally normal. In the past, my potassium was 3.8 and 4.0. Here it's at 4.2. Uh, chloride was at 102. Previous chloride readings were 102 and 101, so that stayed pretty much the same. Carbon dioxide at 28. My carbon dioxide was... Let me see if I can put this up here side by side for you. I'm going to try to line it up right next to the other carbon dioxide number so you can see it clearly. 28 recently, 27 back in 2020, 24, so all in that mid-20s range, which is all good as far as the normal chart. Calcium level, back then it was 9.6 and 9.0. Now my calcium is at 8.9. Total protein was 6.8 on this recent check, previously 7.1 and 6.1. Albumin. 4.7 to 4.1 previously, now 4.5. Globulin, previously 2.4 and 2.0, now 2.3. Albumin globulin ratios has stayed the same, 2.0 originally, 2.1 later, 2.0 now. The last one here on this sheet is bilirubin. We'll bring this down to show the bilirubin. My bilirubin was actually a concern previously at 1.8. You can see on the, the high side of normal down here. And then it dropped down to 1.3 after a few months on lion diet. Now my bilirubin is at 0.8. So that has been a big one for me because it's shown that my liver has improved some from what I can tell because my doctors were telling me, my I had a gastroenterologist that was telling me that that bilirubin being high was indicating that I was getting close to having fatty liver disease. So seeing my bilirubin being at a normal level, that's the lowest I think I've seen it all along. It's always been one point something for the most part, but it hasn't been high since before I started eating lion diet. And that just indicates improvement in both my kids kidneys, and my liver, two very important organs for your body's function, and I'm very happy to see that. All right, so let's take a look at the rest of it here. I had the alkaline phosphase at 68, previous 52 and 58, AST was 20 before, and then 45, but now it's 17. It's well within the normal range. ALT, it was 30. And then it jumped up to 71. Let me take a look at that. Let me look that up real quick. All right, here is uh, what Dr. Barry says when it comes to ALT and AST. Alanine transaminase is an enzyme made by the liver. While a small amount is found outside the liver, if high quantities are found in the bloodstream, this indicates some degree of liver dysfunction to disease. So my ALT being higher before might have indicated that my liver was going through some changes. And your liver does go through some changes when you're on a low-carb diet because your liver is used to processing carbohydrates for what it needs. My body was certainly used to it. Well, now it was getting used to processing fat instead of carbohydrates for the energy that it needed. So I think this is part of the fat adaptation process. And AST is aspartate aminotransferase. An enzyme primarily made in the liver, though also made in small amounts by other organs, similarly to ALT. If high quantities in your are in your blood, there is most likely a liver impairment of some kind. So my doctors were saying back then that I had some liver issues. My numbers were still showing that my liver was under a bit more stress than it had used to have been. But now everything is in the normal range at 17. So another positive. And then finally, the one you've all been waiting for, I'm sure so many people are looking to see, what do your lipid panels look like? My lipid panels are amazing. I mean, 
when it comes to hearing about all my friends on, on carnivore now that I've made over the years since I've been doing this, because I didn't know anything about a carnivore community when I first started doing this. I just heard Jordan Peterson talking about how it had saved his life and saved his daughter's life and had changed their lives in so many ways as far as their health was concerned. And I needed some answers and doctors didn't have any. So I tried this diet just so I could save my life too. And it has. But to find out that so many people are what they call lean mass hyper responders and then their LDL numbers go through the roof, I'm a little surprised to see that my LDL numbers are 79. The highest I've seen since I've been doing this were LDL of 110. Prior to Lion Diet, I was 107 on my LDL. But also, this is, this is a key factor here, is that my HDL was only 42. And then my, uh, I don't even see triglycerides on there. I can't believe I don't have triglycerides saved somewhere. But I do know for a fact uh, that my doctor had told me at one point prior to 2020 that my triglycerides were a little on the high side. So for my triglycerides to be where they are now at 43, which is higher than they were the last time I saw them. Let me see if I can dig up the numbers for when I last had my triglycerides checked. So this is where my triglycerides were previously at 29. My HDL was nice high 96 and uh, my LDL was 91. There's just nothing wrong with these numbers. All I know is, is my numbers have bounced around in a lot of ways throughout the years, the three years that I've been doing this, but they've always stayed in a good healthy range or if they veered out of that healthy range like the AST and the ALT did earlier, then they seem to have recovered just fine after a longer term of eating this way. I'm happy about that. Let's see what else we got here. Testosterone numbers. My previous testosterone numbers were not valid, so I'm going to show you the testosterone numbers that were taken roughly a year after I stopped taking testosterone injections that I had been taking for four years. Here's my numbers, March 29th of 2023. So you can see my testosterone numbers were 588 back then. And then when you come back to the ones I have now at 562, that is much better than when I quit taking testosterone. Immediately, they told me that my testosterone numbers were going to go back to be worse than what they were before I had started taking testosterone. And back when I started taking testosterone, my numbers were in the 380 range. Well, here's what they were immediately after I stopped taking testosterone. This was July 15th of 2022. You can see they were still 395, actually a little higher than when I had started taking testosterone. That was something my doctor said would not happen. And when I start, first started doing lion diet, I had wanted to quit taking testosterone, just like I had quit taking three of my blood pressure medicines taking my uh, GERD medicine, taking all of my allergy medicines, within about 30 to 60 days, I had stopped all of those things. The only thing I didn't stop because I didn't know if it was safe just to stop was to stop taking testosterone. So when I finally talked to my doctor about it, he agreed and took me off all the other meds that I had been on. But he scared me with the testosterone number because he told me that you've been taking testosterone injections now, a very low dose, half a cc every week for almost three years now back then. And if you stop, your body hasn't been making testosterone like it used to because you've been taking these injections. So your numbers are going to go even lower than they were before. And you're going to start to experience all the problems you were having that brought you to come to ask me about testosterone numbers. That problem was erectile dysfunction. Well, I can tell you that not only have my numbers recovered, as you can see here, but they're staying in that same range that they were even two years after quitting taking testosterone. And that, to me, is all a big part of Lion Diet, being able to restore my overall body health that has changed a lot of things. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is something that I think I had a lot more effect on than I would like to admit. But this is an area where I have discussed the importance of getting stimulants out of your life. Stimulants are something that we are so used to in this country and in many other countries because we've had tea and coffee and cigarettes 
and pipes to smoke and marijuana has been around. All of these things have been around for a very long time for people to use for relaxing their nerves or giving them a little energy boost or whatever it is. But my doctor recently did a good look at my TSH and my T4 levels. And this was something that has been on my radar for a couple of years. I've been concerned about my thyroid because I've been noticing a few symptoms of thyroid dysfunction that I have noticed for many years. I've had flaky skin, itchy skin, feel cold all the time. I get cold very easy compared to other people. When I first started taking iodine though, I started to notice a lot of these symptoms went away and I attributed that to helping my thyroid. But then I found out some stuff that is so important for thyroid health that I had no idea would have made such a big difference. Two things that you really have to watch in your life, especially if you had any history of thyroid issues. And my doctor has indicated to me that I've probably always had some thyroid issues. Just because my numbers were lower previously doesn't indicate very much because he was telling me about how TSH levels can vary from one week to the next greatly. You can see my TSH was 2.87 way back in 2020. The thing about TSH is, is it's not a very good indicator of what's going on with thyroid, but I had him at least check the T4. I'd asked him to check T3 also, and you can see the T4 is not low, but it's on the low side of the normal range. So it's not as high as I would like to see it. And my doctor really was not concerned about this at all, as long as I wasn't having any symptoms that would have been of concern for him. The three symptoms that he listed were unexpected weight gain, fatigue, and depression. Well, ultimately, all I've got to say about this, I've already said in another video that I want you to be able to watch after this one. So I'm going to put it up on the screen so that you can click on it immediately when you're done. It is a rather long video, but if you want to have an understanding of what's going on with your thyroid, I would certainly recommend you check that one out. But I know one thing is that what's going on with my thyroid has nothing to do with my diet and it has everything to do with other things that I was allowing to happen in my life involving stress and stimulants. Now, I know that summary isn't going to do it for all the vegans and vegetarians out there who are going to watch this and want to nitpick and find reasons to say that your numbers are horrible. But my doctor doesn't feel that way and I don't feel that way. And I've learned things about my health that have been a mystery to me for many, many years. My doctor suspects that it's genetic what's going on with my thyroid. And that's why I'm so susceptible to the things that go on with stress and stimulants. But according to Dr. Bright, you could cause your own problems, not getting your stress under control and not keeping those stimulants under control. But as I said in the beginning, I'm not an expert on all this blood work stuff. I'm just sharing my numbers with you. You guys decide if you think it helps you or not, but I know my doctor's happy with it and I'm happy with it and that's all that really matters. I feel good and things are moving in the right direction and I'll see you guys next time. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat?